So sometimes um, the lady uh, was just getting called down. She hadn't even won anything, right? <laughs> How funny is that? Like sometimes that's, guys, this is what, my, the title to my teaching today is living life to the full, life to the full. And it should feel like that. Life should feel and can feel like that lady. You, she hadn't even won anything. She clearly just got called down. She, her number got called. And she's like, you know, usually they always have the people that are like the farthest down and they're trampling over people, right? And they're just so excited to get down to the stage that, and they haven't even won anything, right? That's hilarious. And I can't tell you how much, guys, God wants that to be life for you, for us. God wants that. Can you, what happened to my teaching? <laughs> Somebody took it. I just realized, my notes are gone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rough start. Okay, but that's pumping me up. Um, so God wants that for you and I to be jumping for joy, full of peace and joy and life, life to the full. And like Susan said, you know, I, I was the same way that I, I just didn't, I, I didn't know um, that life could be this good. I just, I, I, it didn't always feel good. That's for sure. But let me tell you, God wants you to have amazing, bomb, fat, exciting lives that just are like, when you wake up in the morning, you just say, I love you, God, and I thank you for my life, and it's amazing. Because the people are amazing, you know, the things in it are amazing, things are bearing fruit in your life. That's what God wants for you. And it's always been his intention, right? It's always been part of his plan, and that's why he sent Jesus. Uh, so, so, but what is, does life always feel like you're on the prices, right? Heck no, it does not. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, the price is wrong, God, and this sucks, you know? Uh, and I have definitely felt that way where the price was not right for me. And, um, you know, I, and talk about The Walking Dead. I'm wrap, we're wrapping up The Walking Dead series, and uh, I've definitely felt like The Walking Dead. I've definitely uh, tried to fill up my life with a bunch of stuff that really just left me feeling empty. I mean, from... From a bunch of, you know, binging Netflix, uh, you know, thinking that was the best use of my time, and at the end I'm more exhausted, and Monday comes, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even get to rest, you know, uh, because I just binged on Netflix. Um, I mean, I know I'm not the only one on that. Uh, <laughs> you know, eating way too much food, that one's still a struggle, but, uh, you know, definitely try to fill myself up with that. Uh, and, and those are serious things, you know, they're, they're, they're everyday things, but, you know, it's just like, Feel, that's not going to fill us up, right? That, that's not what brings joy in life and peace to the fool. Um, and so, like, I also tried, I don't know about you, but I've, I've tried to fill up my life with things that are just, I couldn't quite, I felt like I couldn't quite hold on to joy. I couldn't quite hold on to peace. It, it, very little. I mean, I'd come to church or an event or whatever, and I'd feel joy. I'd feel, I'd feel peace or whatever, but very momentarily. It wasn't lasting. And have you ever felt that way, where you're just like, I can't quite hold on to it, God? How do, what do I do? How can I get there? I mean, gosh, I hate that it only lasts for a Sunday, you know? Um, and so definitely, I've definitely struggled with that. And also, like, I used to try to fill up my time with, I'm single, and so I used to try to fill up my time with, like, I, the idea of the future. You know, if only, you know, I used to think that marriage would legitimize my life. Like, only if I get married, that's when my life will be great, and that's when I'll start, you know? But until then, my life sucks. You know, or or um, I know, and the, the, you know, those kind of ideas fill, fizzle out; they don't pan out. And so uh, I used to think, okay, well, since that's not happening, uh, maybe career, a great job, you know, like success, that would fill me up. That's that's the goal. And so, and then that kind of fizzled out for me. And then you know, and then so so I had all these ideas of like all these grand ideas of of what would bring me life, right? What would make me feel really satisfied, and they would fizzle out. So. Not very lasting joy there, right? So, and and so we try to fill up our lives with all this stuff, right? Um, and also, like, um, in these grand ideas, there's there's not based in reality, right? We have a lot of ideas, but they're not based in reality, so they, they that's why they fizzle out. Uh, and then even when when that wouldn't necessarily when I get tired of that, um, I resorted to isolation. You know, like oh, I'd just rather be alone then. You know, I'd just rather be. Ugh, I don't want to be. You know, I just don't want to be needed. I don't want to want anything from anybody. I'm just going to do my thing and be isolated. I've definitely done that. So we resort to all these things, right, that, that we think are going to be a good idea for us to get filled up, and it just never lasts. You know, it feels good for like a second. Netflix, like a day of Netflix feels good, and then that's it, right? <laughs> and then, or like, you know, I don't know, isolation. Over time, that's where depression starts, right? So. Life doesn't always feel like you're on the prices right, but, and even, 
I mean, the, the bigger one for me was that not long ago I was trying to do ministry without God. And all these things kind of uh, were contributing to that. And, but that's kind of silly, doing ministry without God. It's possible, actually. Uh, where I was really self-reliant to the point that people getting saved was like, big deal. I mean, that's pretty sad, guys. You know, that, 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 that people getting saved should be the celebration in heaven. And God's like, you know, it should be that, you know. Um, but that's how dead I felt. That's how dead and, and just detached and numb I got from, and I'm serving, guys. You know, like, that's hard. And, and so I was like, God, this sucks. I hate my life. I hate that I don't feel joy and I'm serving you. I'm supposed to feel joy, God. I come to church every Sunday. I serve you. I'm committed. You know, I'm, I want to be there, and yet I don't feel that. Why? You know? I'm sure, have you ever felt that way where you're just like, why can I not have this be ongoing? And, and part of that is, is that God has to be the source of that, right? And so, <clears throat> so that kind of, the, that's kind of what kind of broke the straw for me. Or the, what is it? Well, whatever. Uh, the, <laughs> you know, that did it for me. Where I was like, you know, this is just, so I got some help. And uh, where, um, and in, in, in seeking in that, and where I just felt like, God, this is not okay. This, this is not okay with me. And so in seeking and searching in that, um, one particular day I was searching and seeking and spending time with God and uh, I got a vision of uh, me praying and uh, with my head on, on a Bible and uh, I was kneeling with my head on a Bible and over and over and over I heard God say, I will bring you joy, I will bring you peace, I will bring you life over and over and over again. I will bring you joy, I will bring you peace, I will bring you life. And uh, and and <laughs> And so I felt, so then I was like, well, I was, my mind was blown uh, because I was seeking him and I was like, God, you don't know how bad I needed to hear that, that there's hope, that, I, that you, you said, he said exactly what I needed to hear that because I wanted joy and I wanted peace and I couldn't, I didn't know how to grab it on my own. I didn't know how to generate that on my own. And so the image of me on the Bible saying was like, that the joy and the peace comes from meditating on my word and spending time with me, which is what I was doing. And... Uh, and this will bring you joy, and this will bring you peace. Spending time with me and meditating on the truth, you know, that, that that's life-giving. And so then, uh, part, in that same particular vision, I heard God say 4 a.m., and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> okay, 4 a.m., yeah, that's a bit much. Um, but, but I was like, okay, how about 5, please? <laughs> and so, so I did it. And ever since then, guys, it's been over six months. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I wake up 5 a.m. sharp every time, but there was a long period, chunk period of time where, where, where I was waking up at 5 a.m. And it was the most amazing, it's been the most amazing time spending time with God. And um, I don't want to cry, but uh, where, guys, it took one day to spend a couple hours with God. My heart changed like that, where I was experiencing joy, experiencing joy and, and peace. And, and so I don't, and so... That's where it is. That's where it's at, okay? And some of the things that I'm... So in trying to find my way back, I found that. And... <clears throat> let me clear my throat, sorry. Um, so I decided to, to do that, and I'm committed to that. I will not negotiate that time anymore. I will not. I am not going back to Walking Dead, okay? It's just... And, and that's what I want to share with you today, is how the hows uh, of that, um, and, and how that can bring you joy and peace and life, and to the full, where it's just like, where you wake up in the morning, there's a bounce in your step, and you're like, you know what, things are, I'm struggling, there's things that are hard, but my life is good. So it's not like, oh my, I love my life because everything goes great, no. <laughs> like, I love my life because internally I feel a God, God in, in his peace, right? And so we all can be walking around with that, even when stuff happens, so bad things happen. So. Uh, the, the hows on how to have joy, peace, life to the full are four key things that I want to share with you. So get your notes out. Um, <clears throat> number one, submission. Whew, don't get scared by that word, please. <laughs> submission is an awesome thing. It's, it's basically saying, not my will, God, but your will. Okay? Uh, number two is discipline. Getting in the habit of doing hard things. Getting in the habit of saying, you know what, that's really hard, but I can do it. Um, Number three, active prayer. Ask, listen, and do, okay? And so it's not just a one-way thing. It's not, here's my list, God. 
It's like you should, it's a, it's a two, it should be a two-way relationship where you're listening to God and also doing what you're hearing, right? Because then what's the point? That's how you think, God never answers my prayers. Well, you never do anything, right? Like, so that's part of it. That's what I used to think. I'm like, God, you just don't care. And I'm like, I, and I never had the courage to actually do the things he was asking me to do. So that's when things started getting real. Um, so then reaching number four, which is really cool and life-changing and life-giving, is re- reaching out. Reaching out to people simply because it's life-giving to you and to other people, and that's the way God made us. For, to reach out, and the, so if you're so, and I'm gonna go into these into details. So, um, cool. So, and submission number one is it says it's really just saying means not my will but your will be done, okay? And James uh, four seven says therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Um, and the concept of submission is that. Um, you know, submission is, is not the most appealing to everybody all the time because people have been unsafe, right? Like, we haven't always had the safest people, and so that's why I think sometimes when you say the word submission, then you're like, Ugh, you know? Like, I know I have. I cringed. So, <laughs> and, and honestly, guys, that comes from people submitting to people that in our lives that have been unsafe, and so God gets the... Uh, out, gets the... the... the uh, what do you call that? The side effect. Blame. The what? Blame. <laughs> Blame. Yeah. He gets the worst of it because poor guy, right? So, but it should be that our first priority is to please God. It just says, therefore, submit to God. You know, it just says, therefore, submit to God. It should be that that's our first priority and that, and, and because he's a safe person, unlike the people that have hurt us, unlike you know, the experiences that we've had with other people that have not been safe, he is safe. So, and also think, another thing is like, if we don't like um, the idea of submission is to ask why, to ask yourself, why don't I like that? Something doesn't sit right with me about that. And so your next move would want, you would want it to be, why not God? Because I, if you are all good, if you are love, why am I opposing that? Why am I opposing you? I don't want to be against you, you know? So that should be the next question you want to ask is like, if, if there's a part of submission that you just really can't handle or wrap your, your heart around, you know, it's just scary, is to ask why. And that'll take you on a, on a journey to find out what's causing that. Um, it should be that, that, that we can be people that are coached. Because that's all it means. Submission is that you're willing to say, yeah, I can be coached. I don't have all the answers, right? So, and also it's that we're, because we're grown-ups, we choose now who we submit to, right? So it's cool. So, like, I know um, a lot of our um, probably neg- negative experiences have come because when we were young, right, we submitted to people that maybe weren't safe or we've had unsafe relationships where we got taken advantage of. And so, uh, but now that we're grown-ups, we're very much empowered and can choose who, who, to, who to submit to. So, because um, you want to be reacting out of, you don't want to be reacting out of hurt, you want to be reacting out of freedom, right? So it's not like when, you shouldn't be this like, no, don't tell me what to do, you know? That, that, was, that, that, that was me. And, and, and not to say that I'm all cleared from that, but uh, in particular, one thing that I, that I really had a hard time submitting was my dating life. And this is just an example from my personal experience, it could be different for you, but um, it was just like, I was just so not, I thought submitting that part of my life was a waste of time, quite frankly, because I felt like, God, what does my dating life have to do with ministry? Let's just go. Let's serve you. Like, I don't need to get married. Like, I don't need to, I, I'm good. Like, you know, let's just, let's just serve your people. Let's go, go, go. I do, do, do. And that's it. You know, why waste time on that? And the reality was that I've been really hurt by that. That's why I didn't want to let him in, right? Like, I had a dad who left when I was six. I mean, he abandoned our family, basically, uh, and left us in a shelter. I mean, that was a deep, deep wound there that I was holding on to. So why, you know, it was scary to let God in and into um, where my heart, you know, in the most inner places of my heart there. So that, and God's like, mm, I'm not asking you to sacrifice marriage, you know? <laughs> Sometimes we want to, we're like, God, no, we'll just do without the reality. In the reality, it's like you're reactive, you know, you're, you're making decisions out of, out of hurt, and God's not even asking you to give up things. So it's just, so it's, that's one part of submission. And uh, submission is super juicy and awesome. It's an amazing thing. Uh, Matthew 26, 39 says, Jesus fell to his face and uh, 
prayed, Oh my father, it is possible, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Uh, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And in struggle, guys, we want our response to be that. Like Jesus, right? Like, not my will, but your will. I mean, this uh, Matthew here, Matthew 26, this is, Jesus was about to face the cross. He knew what was coming to him. He knew very well what was waiting for him. You know, uh, he knew he was going to die a really brutal death. And so, uh, you see very much the two wills here. There's his will and there's God's will. And so, talk about Talk about fear. Talk about uh, doing hard things. Uh, that's where we want. We want to get to the place where we say, not my will, but your will be done. We will never be facing a cross. Okay? But it should be that. That's the answer we want to get to. Yes. Yes. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. Um, and God gets that's hard, and we won't get there overnight, but as much as possible, like, that's where we want to be. So... And dating felt like that to me, or I was like, no, you know, <laughs> I just don't want to. And uh, felt like a little kid. We're like, no, you can't tell me who to date. You can't, you can't tell me what to do, you know. What you have for me is boring, you know. Uh, and so I just, you know, just so funny and immature, really. And God's probably thinking that's cute, but that, that's <laughs> not cute when you're 33 and whatever, right? So, uh, um, so uh, where was I? Um, so also, Satan hates when we submit to God. Also, like, he just hates that. Why? Because he knows it's power. Okay? So, that's another reason why we want to submit to God, because it's, so, it's nice to think that, you know, well, you know, I, I, I'm not, I may not be submitting this to God, but, um, but I'm, but, but I, uh, so it's just my, it, I'm just neutral, like, I'm just, in fact, impacting me. No. That's a lie. Because any, it's a submit to God, period, right? So it's like, that's, that's a, a thing I think I used to struggle with, with like, a, my dating life isn't hurting me or anybody else. Well, yeah, it was, actually. It was affecting my leadership. I wasn't being, because that part of my, my heart was detached. I was lacking compassion for the people I was leading. I mean, we do dating workshops, and uh, I lead groups, and yet I'm asking people to do something that I wasn't willing to do, is to be open and seek God. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, talk about hypocritical. So... It does affect you. you. It's a lie to think that you're going to just be neutral and not give certain parts of your life to God. Guess what? <laughs> Satan's in that. He really is. And so, but it, that's the lie. See, the blinding part is that we think it's all good, because, but we have it under wrap and whatnot, right? But so, he, so Satan hates when we give, it, give the submission to God. But the cool thing about God is that he's super safe. He is the one you want to be giving it to because when you do, you feel like the price is right. Like you feel like that lady. You actually get the fruit of submission, which is really cool. I love that lady. I was just like, I need to have this video open up my teaching. Um, and, and, you know, she doesn't even want anything, and that's what it feels. I'm like, God, I haven't, my life, you know, it's simple, whatever, but uh, I don't know what you have for me, but I just love you. I'll follow you anywhere, you know? That's how I feel. Um, and so we, when we submit to God, he knows he, that's, he, Satan knows that he's powerless, and, and uh, we actually are also exercising our right to choose. You know, and, and, and choosing out of freedom, which is the ultimate goal, that we choose God because he's just been amazing to us. Uh, another reason why we want to understand submission is because he, uh, Hebrews 12, 9, 10 says, which says, further, we have, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect, okay? Shall we not much more readily be in subjection, there's that word, to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. That's deep, guys. If if, you know, he's basically saying, if you listen to your parents that were strict, you know, then you can definitely submit to me, you know? Or or there's times where, you know, some parents teach their kids that little white lies are okay. You know what I mean? So you grew up in a household where like lying is okay, and we submitted to that, right? Um, that's basically what he's saying, you know. And maybe strict parents, where they were just like, oh, you know, and you submitted to that, and it's making the, the contrast of like, you've submitted to yourself to other things like that. So why not me? You know, I'm safe. Uh, so 
And also, like, God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. If, any, if I want to submit to anybody, I want to submit to him, right? He's got some power, really. Um, so, I honestly, and, and the reality, too, is, like, my earthly father kind of is not, kind of, well, not the greatest. I'll leave it at that. So, uh, I think, you know, Sometimes, again, we're afraid to submit to God because we're afraid of getting hurt the way parents have hurt us, you know, or, or people in authority. So another part of submission is submitting to one another. That's where it gets really interesting uh, and really cool, actually. Uh, in 1 Peter 5, it says, 5, 5 says, Likewise, you uh, younger people, submit yourselves to your elders, yet all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And, you know, the elders part is just somebody who knows more than you. It's not an age thing, necessarily. I mean... It could be just somebody who knows more than you, who, who, who's not struggling in the areas you are. You know, it's being coached by someone. And it's not, and it's also not submitting to crazy people. I just want to really clarify that, that you don't submit to unsafe people, okay? Because God says so. No. <laughs> That's a big no. You submit to people that are safe, they are going to take care of your heart, and that are, that are also doing God's will in their life, that they're not just preaching it to you, right? Right here. So, um... But I'm working on it. It's not that bad, guys. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, but but so so it's not submitting to crazy people. Um, also, another part of the reason why God's a- asking us uh, to submit to one another, and, and that where we want to be in the place that we can, is because if we don't, otherwise we're kind of closed off people. You're kind of saying, I can't learn from that. You know, like you have nothing to teach me. Uh, so. Otherwise, you become a closed system. So, um, and sometimes we think we're being controlled when we're not. So that's also another thing we want to we want to like explore is like, why is that hard for me? Why, you know, when was the last time I asked for feedback? You know, when was the last time I, I got some help with something? And it's not like a wrong or right thing. It just maybe you weren't raised to ask for help. I wasn't. I was not encouraged. I didn't even. I was so afraid of. Um, not being able to learn, I really seriously thought something was wrong with me that I couldn't learn. And so I had a lot of fear about raising my hand in school and it just followed me, creeped me, creeped into my adulthood where I it just felt like I won't I can't let people know that I don't feel like I know stuff. And so that made me think like maybe a closed system. So it makes us that where we can't be coached and we can't be we can't learn from other people. So and there's some you know there's sometimes some pride in that. So that's also the humility part that this verse is talking about is saying being willing to know that you don't to say you don't have all the answers, right? Um, and so it's also a sign of spirit, spiritual maturity that you can get some help, that you can reach out to people and say you're doing much better in this than I am. You know, uh, so so there's nothing wrong with that. Thank God. Now I'm like, oh Lord, thank you, Jesus, that I don't have to have all the answers. It's great, you know. Uh, so to embrace that, and so that's a big part of it of submission. So submission is a big, juicy one. We haven't even gotten to number two, and I'll speed it up here. Number two is discipline. Getting in the habit of doing hard things. That's a huge one. Um, Hebrews 12:11 says, "Now chastening seems to be chastening, chastening." Tomato, tomato, I don't know. Uh, seems to be joyful for the present, but painful nevertheless. Afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Do we have some workout freaks? Oh, right here, yes. Okay, so you know and can appreciate that there's pain in that, right? So that's all it's saying, that... that um, no restraint seems to be joyful at the moment, you know? So there's the, the part of discipline, for instance, like waking up early, right? It's hard. <laughs> and like going to the gym, working out is a great example of doing hard things. And in term, and it's great a parallel to, to doing things that are hard for God, that it doesn't seem fun in the moment, and sometimes we just give up there. We're like, this isn't fun, what? This, this has to be wrong, right? <laughs> this can't be right. So. 
we give up. But the thing is, is like the payoff doesn't, with working out muscle, you have to feed it protein, all that good stuff. It doesn't come until later, but then you start seeing results. You're like, ooh, yes, you know, this is working. So, so he's, it's just keeping it real. Like there, it's not going to be fun at first, you know, but, um, so training is part of discipline. Um, even though I'm a morning person, so I want to relate to, to prayer. Even though I'm a morning person, like I really am a morning person, it was still hard for me to wake up early in the morning to to wake up to, to pray. It's different if you're telling me if I was like, oh, I'm gonna wake up early, have a cup of coffee, and watch Good Morning America. You know, like it's different than that. My mindset is different, right? There's not engaged. There's not. I'm not engaged. I'm not gonna be focused there. Um, my focus is different. So when I was like, God, 4 a.m., you know, like, it's a, it's a bit rough. Uh, but I was like, okay, five. And so, man, was I tired. <laughs> I was tired. But, but so it was different. It was, I felt the burn. And uh, it was hard. So it's different. It's, it's a different focus. And so maybe coming to church is that for you. Where it's like, oh, this hurts me, coming to church, you know, or going to fellowship, or or uh, um, reading the Bible can be that like that for you, where it's hard, right, at first. But so it's the same thing that the discipline, without discipline, without training, we don't see any fruit, and and so that's also what leads. So, but but the cool thing about discipline is that it brings you to freedom. It actually gives you freedom. It doesn't give you bondage. So life starts to feel more full. Uh, so that's a, a huge ingredient of living life to the full and feeling like I love my life because I'm disciplined. Do you know? I see the fruit in things here. I'm mature. So honestly, I can't tell you how much that makes me feel good about my life, that I'm that person, and, and that we can be that. Um, Again, I just want to reference Matthew 26, 39. It says, again, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will, mean I can do hard things. And getting in the habit of saying that out loud, Nancy and, um, and our leadership team has, a, has us do that out loud, and it's really awkward because uh, we're just like, I can do hard things. You know? And she just makes us do these like really biblical mantras, and she's like, right now you're William Wallace, go. And, and we're like, right now. You know, and our, her neighbors probably think we're nuts, but 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 uh, and if you, I can't tell you how much it changes your mindset to do it. Afterwards, doesn't it feel different? Where where after we say it out loud, uh, it, I actually start to feel. I'm like, oh, I do feel pumped. So try it, guys. If when you're by yourself on your way to work, you have a hard meeting. Um, let, you know, I don't teach all the time, so this is not easy. So I was like, I have to tell myself, I can do hard things. I love to teach. You know, I tell myself the truth, and it really pumps me up. So tomorrow on your way to work, try it. Talk to yourself and say, I can do hard things out loud. Uh, It's not crazy. Uh, And also, uh, speaking the difficult things and getting in the habit of of, um, can be challenging because um, active prayer actually is... Number three, sorry, active, it's active prayer. Ask, listen, and do. And um, prayer has been probably the number one thing that brought me back to life, where I felt like, whoa, this is life. This is life-giving. Um, and in that time, in, in verse, actually, Colossians 4, 2 says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving, and earnestly meaning seriously. Okay? Make it count. Make long pockets of time to, to, to have, like you do for other things and for other people. Um, honestly, now at 30 minutes, I'm just getting warmed up. Like, it, it takes sometimes, it takes that 30, it just takes 30 minutes to just get your heart warmed. And then the rest of another 30 minutes or an hour to really just start feeling the presence of God and enjoying prayer, actually. So I decided, you know, I'm going to get up at, it, at crack of dawn and start praying. And so, you know, I'm st- my mind, you know, I got coffee and my brain's still asleep and all that, whatever, right? But get on my knees and I, and I part of what I um, make myself do now is purposefully say worship words. Like Jesus said, in, in, in the, and there's no rules, there's no right or wrong here, um, but these are just tips on how to get creative with your prayer time if it's feeling a little dry, like, like this is just a, a list. Um, I, you know, Jesus in his very last moment said, Abba, Father, and Abba means Daddy. I mean, it doesn't get any more vulnerable than that, where you're, 
where in his last moments he was just like, Daddy, if, there, if there's any other way, you know, let this cup pass for me. Um, so, and also you think about the Lord's Prayer, how he taught us to, to pray. It says, hallowed be your name. God says it's, he's holy and he's spirit, right? So like, when was the last time you, in prayer you said, creator, holy is your name. When was the last time we did that, you know? Talk about try it. I mean, it gives me just, just chills thinking about it because when I do it, it brings me into a focus that God is God. And I'm like just Patty, you know? And I need God. And so, I, and, and you know, sometimes we pump ourselves up for other things, right? We warm up ourselves for other things. Working out, you do that little eight-minute warm-up walk for the weights, whatever. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, I skip that. No, um, but but there's value in that. Do you see where you get creative and you you that it matters that much that that time you're just like God, this is my time with you. I'm gonna play with this. It's I'm gonna get connected and that's the focus. Okay. So also worship music is amazing. I I love a band called Jesus Culture. Uh, uh, Kim Walker is the lead singer and she reminds me like I'm not a big pet. Pat Benatar fan or whatever, but she reminds me of like, the, she's like the rock chick of Christian music and I love that. And so she says things are just super passionate and I, I purposely play those songs during my prayer time in the morning because I know I'm not going to waste any time. Do you know? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing around. <laughs> I want my heart to know that God, that I'm in the presence of the creator. And I think about nature too. I think about planets. I think about the galaxies and I'm just like, whoa. And, and so it really helps guys to start getting creative with your time with God. But don't be like, you know, I mean, not to sound advice giving, but, but, but honestly, when was the last time you didn't just put up a, a, a list, you know, where you actually were also listening? You took 30 minutes to talk and 30 minutes to listen. And then 30, another 30 minutes to just be silent and play music. And then part of it, too, what I do is that I'll, I, it, while the music's going, sometimes I won't have lyrics, sometimes I'll just have instrumental things, and then I'll read scripture when the instrumental's playing, and I'll, and I'll pick one verse, and I'll say it over and over and over, and, and, and I say, God, let this, deep, let's, let this go deep for me until it lives in me, you know, and you pick whatever verse speaks to you that morning. Um, and, you, and you ask God, help me to understand this, I don't understand this verse, and let this live for me. And so that also mixes it up in the time that you spent with God. Um, so there's no rules, guys. I mean, you can, if you like to sing, you can sing. If you can, you know, if you're not waking anybody up in the morning. <laughs> if you like to do dancing, whatever, you know, like you write poetry, you like writing, you like exercising. Get creative with that time with God. It's actually, there's no rules to that. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I mean by make it connect, get vulnerable. Um, and so we, we want to con purposely connect and acknowledge that we're in the presence of the creator. Okay? That we call him that. Don't feel weird by, for calling him creator. That's what he is. You know? Um, I kid you not. It really bumps me into the reality that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And, uh, and, and Jesus, in the Lord's Prayer, uh, he really did give us a great example of how to pray. And you can make it your own. Um, Also, uh, there's been times where I don't, it just depends on how I feel, but um, where, where I curl up or where I, it's not always about this, it's about this, you know? So it's just moving your, yourself to wherever God's calling you. Because sometimes God will tell you, God will tell me, get up, you know, do this, because this gets comfortable, you know? So be aware of that. Have that time. Be focused where you're seeking in your thoughts. Where allow yourself to have visions and, and, and be led that way. Uh, so that's really cool. That's my favorite, favorite, favorite part about living life to the full and, and, the, and how to incorporate some of these ingredients. Prayer is probably my favorite, favorite part um, of, of this. It's been the most amazing thing. And I mean, I'm bald for four hours and it's been amazing. Uh, so number four. Our last point here, reaching out is life-giving, right? Uh, James 2.26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So James is equating not reaching out to, you know, to other people to the, not having the spirit of God in us. I mean, that's a big deal. They're, they're, that, that he's kind of saying, if you're not going to bless anybody else, if you're just going to be about you, what's the point? You know, then then we're then it's it's just kind of dead. 
you know? So, um, <clears throat> but the redemptive part of this is that there's life in reaching out and to bless others. And I felt like the walking dead when I was in isolation and I wasn't reaching out to people. I wasn't, it was all about how I felt and I needed to feel. And so uh, disciplining myself to reach out and initiating has been a big part of that too. Martha, who's not here, is just with the kids. Her and I do Friday night socials and that's how I got started where I'm just like, I'm, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make this a part of my life. And it's not just socializing, it's really getting in the focus of like, I'm going to bless somebody tonight. It's not going to be about me. I, the focus is, God, who, I, who do I spend time with? And it's really, really fun. In, in the process, you, you have a lot of fun. So uh, so that's part of the reaching out. And so, guys, like, let's fight for this. The reaching out is just, I think a lot of us, I see that we, a lot of people I talk to, to number four uh, seems to be the hardest one in, in connecting to people. Um, and, and it's no wonder because we have been hurt by people, right? And, and, and we get comfortable living by ourselves and all that. But it's not going to pump life into us. You know, not reaching out is, is not life-giving. What gives life is you being fed by others and you feeding others and it all coming from God. You know, that the life, the, the, that, that's coming from God. And so honestly, it's the very reason why we do big days. That's the only reason, because it pumps life into searchlight. If, we, if nobody else ever came again, how boring would that be? <laughs> I love everybody in this room, but that would be so boring, and it would just die, right? That, that, that's part of the reason why we have big days, that it breathes life, it pumps life into uh, this community and you and I, and we see the, 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 how people get blessed, and I came, you know, we got some new people here, so welcome. Um, so... Uh, the big days are life-giving, and that's why we do them. So uh, it's a great way to, to reach out to people that way, that next, sun, next Sunday, May 31st, you can say, you know what, I'm going to make it a point to talk to somebody new because it's going to bless me and I'm going to bless them. And I can do hard things. Okay? <laughs> so, um, and so let, recapping, number one, it says submission, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah? Number two, discipline, getting in the habit of doing hard things because you can. And number Three, active prayer. Get creative, mix it up, ask, listen, and do. Uh, and reaching out is life-giving. Um, this will bring you joy. This will bring you peace. This will bring you life for sure. I've seen the, the results in my life, and I and, and I didn't. I mean, I didn't come up with that. God did. Uh, and so, in light of our big day. Um, we're, Alberto's going to give you, or you have connection cards in your programs already, but uh, it's not too late to sign up people that you want us to pray for for the next Sunday. You can still, you know, if you're thinking about coworkers or people you can invite to the big day, it's not too late, guys. Um, <clears throat> and I want you guys to think about, really, God, like, you know, you are the creator. You, can, you brought me here, you can bring other people here. You know, you, you got my butt to search light, you can bring other people. And I want that. You could say, I want that so bad. I want to be the person that brings more people to, to have joy and have full lives that like, that they love their lives. And you want, I want other people to share in on that. How exciting is that, guys? Like, I love, love, love my life. And I want other people to have that too. I don't want to keep that to myself. So... Have that be the thought in which, like you, you pray with for next Sunday, and uh, and do whatever it takes. You know, uh, it says that uh, we just heard this in a video somewhere that 80% of people come to church when you offer them a ride. Easy, <laughs> right there, winner. Let me pick you up. <laughs>